Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A wild police chase down river with a suspect jumping off the Rouge River Bridge in a desperate effort to evade officers. And it tops our news tonight at 11. Police say this all started when some Mustangs were stolen from the Flat Rock plant. Let's get right to Tim Pamplin, who is on the scene with a night cam. Tim. Quite a wild scene along 75 as these Mustangs were being stolen from the Ford Lot Brownstown Township Police were in pursuit of one of them. It ran out of gas up there. The driver jumps down here. He's seriously injured. After he jumps over, the officers come dashing around the freeway ramps to get down here. The thief was laying in some brush down there. He's now in the back of the ambulance in fairly serious condition, I'm being told. Now, we've got a camera. There we go. This is looking topside, zooming into where the Mustang is conked out. Out of gas, that's when the driver, like we say, hops out, jumps over the bridge down below. It's about 30, 40 feet down here. Again, serious injuries on him. But uh, we've heard about these uh, thieves stealing these hot cars from the factories around town. Well, one of them didn't get away with it tonight. That is a scene along the Rouge River Bridge with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Okay, Tim, thanks. A windy night across Metro Detroit with some storms moving through the area, too. So let's check in with Kim Adams with what's left of those storms. Kim? Well, not much is left. They were fast moving storms as they moved off to the east at 50 miles per hour and winds were high within the storms. We had wind gusts up to about 40 to 45 miles per hour. Right now, the only area we have left here uh, up in Richmond and then also I want to zoom in right here in East Point. There's this one cell just south of Roseville moving along I-75. It does not affect the gross point, so it is just this one little area of heavy rain. Nothing severe, nothing that we really uh, have to worry about, but you know, it is something that you'll keep in mind if you do live in East Point. Otherwise, our attention fo focuses now on temperatures. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, temps will be in the 40s behind this cold front, so mostly cloudy and cool at the bus stop. Could be a couple isolated showers, especially if you live north of I-69. Otherwise, most of Metro Detroit should be dry. 59 will be the high, but I want to give you a peek at what's ahead with the temperature trend over the next seven days, well below our normal average high of 64. In fact, by Tuesday, highs are in the 40s. We'll talk more about our weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, Kim, this was the scene at Monday's school board meeting in Dearborn when the fire marshal had to end the meeting early with the police chief also called to calm things down. The district will try again tomorrow night, but with some changes. This all has to do with six books in the school's collection of half a million, six out of a half a million books with some calling for those books to be banned, others insisting that's not the answer. Mar McDonald live in Dearborn tonight. And for starters, Mar, the board is moving this meeting to a larger facility, right? Devin, that's right. They're moving it here to Stout Middle School. There's an auditorium here. It can seat 600 people. They have overflow rooms as well. The school district tells me they believe between four and 500 people showed up on Monday. Monday's Dearborn School Board meeting turned into pandemonium as people shouted down speakers and board members. It got packed to the point the fire marshal closed it down and the police chief himself showed up to calm everybody down. What's riled up so many? Arguments over six books in the school district's collection of 500,000. And we're not going to let them put the books on the shelf. I don't care what administration said the books supposed to be on the shelf. These are books that should not be on a shelf. And while not all deal with LGBTQ subject matter, it's those titles that really got people outraged. What else had them furious? The decision to shut down the meeting. The Dearborn Schools Communications Director tells us tonight everybody who wants to talk will get their chance tomorrow, starting with those who filled out a blue card to speak on Monday. Those who filled out a blue card at Monday's meeting will be given the opportunity to come to the podium and share their thoughts. They will have three minutes, which is the standard procedure. It's nothing new. It's been in place for years. Back here live and once those who were scheduled to speak on Monday get their chance, then they will open it up to new people who come tomorrow. And Devin, Kimberly, one more thing from the district. You saw the video and you saw a lot of people, well, not a lot, several, uh, brought really large signs. They're asking people not to do that. They say it obstructs other people's views. Um, 
Devin, Kimberly. Well, we, as, we, as you were talking with Dave Mustin in there, we know the school district is reviewing these titles, reviewing. What, what exactly does that mean? So Devin, they have a multi-tiered um, review process. For starters, it usually starts with a parent who says, you know, I'm uncomfortable with this book. Okay, you go to the school principal and the school principal goes to the media specialist and then they have a panel of their district media specialists look at it, make whatever decision that decision is going to be. Hmm. Okay, if a parent is still unhappy with that decision, they then have the opportunity to ask for a second review. That would be a panel of parents, of community members, a student, as well as staff. Back to you. We'll be watching to see what happens tomorrow night. All right, Mara. For the third time in less than a week, activists marched on Detroit's west side demanding justice for Porter Burks. He's the young man shot and killed by police officers during a mental health crisis. Pamela Osborne, live tonight for us. Pam, this group is calling for even more rallies and marches. That's right, Kimberly. They say they're going to continue to do these marches until they know the names of the officers involved in that fatal shooting. The group BAM, by any means necessary, came together Wednesday night to make noise Fire in jail, the killer cops. over the police shooting death of 22-year-old Porter Burks. We want them fired from the police department and we want them jailed for murder. The young man was having a mental health emergency earlier this month when his family called for help. Detroit police responded and found Burks with a knife on Snowden Avenue and Linden Street near his home. They tried to talk him down. My name is Sean, man. You're okay. You're not in any trouble. Okay. Police say Burks refused to drop the knife and charged at officers. Five officers fired 38 shots. Nobody should be bringing guns to a mental health crisis. That's what I make of that. What, what we really need is more mental health service, but, but above all, right now what we need is those killer cops to be locked up and their names to be made public so we know who they are. DPD says it's investigating every aspect of the tragedy, adding as one officer drove Burks to the hospital, another performed chest compressions until they arrived. There is absolutely no justification for, for, for the execution that they committed against Porter Burks. And I did reach out to DPD, but we have not heard back yet tonight. But what I can tell you is that they are conducting an internal review to see what exactly happened that morning of October 2nd. And then Michigan State Police, they're doing the criminal investigation. Once that investigation is complete, they will forward those findings over to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. But between now and then, no word on how long that process is going to take or if we'll learn anything additional about the officers involved until that point. Reporting live outside of DPD headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Thanks for your report tonight, Pam. Detroit police say the search for Zion Foster is over. Zion's mother says investigators did not find her body at the Lenox Township landfill. Crews have been searching there since May. Police believed her body was buried there after her cousin admitted to putting her in a Detroit dumpster. Detroit police will talk more about the search next week. The family of a 17 year old is filing a federal lawsuit against Warren police after a rough arrest. Tyler Water was uh, involved in a police chase back in a stolen car back in June 20 uh, or June 2nd. Rather, his attorney says police violated Wade's constitutional rights after he was pulled over. He says body cam video shows him being pulled out of the car with officers punching the teen several times, even though he wasn't resisting. He calls the force unreasonable and excessive. Why are you hitting me? I am not resisting. I put my hands up. Those were the words of a 17 year old boy after he was dragged out of a car by grown men, slammed to the ground, and then beaten until he laid in the pool of his own blood. I'm just scared to go places and stuff. Like, I don't even like leaving the house anymore, to be honest. Like, I don't leave the house. I'm like scared of police. An internal investigation led to an officer's suspension for violating policy. Wade pleaded no contest to several charges, including receiving and concealing a stolen vehicle. Detroit police are investigating after a homeowner opens fire on a man who broke into his house. Police say the home invader was shot and killed around 930 this morning inside the home on Lorraine Street. That's right in the area of Linwood and I-94. A 35 year old man died at the scene. Officers say it appears the man was trying to force his way in through a window. Police questioned two people inside the home at the time of the shooting. 
Tomorrow night, Governor Whitmer will share the same stage as her Republican challenger, Tudor Dixon, for their first debate. A debate being hosted by Wood TV. Of course, that's the NBC affiliate in Grand Rapids. One of just two debates scheduled between Governor Whitmer and Tudor Dixon ahead of Election Day. And you can watch the debate live on ClickOnDetroit.com or on Local 4 Plus. It gets started at 7 p.m. By the way, our Mara McDonald will also be there. Live coverage coming up on Local 4 News tomorrow at 10 and 11 p.m.